Today we have a triple base suggestion that popped up on my live stream this past Wednesday. Three bottles from the same distillery, all relatively affordable and all 100 proof and also all from Brown Foreman. Which Brown Foreman product is the top tier 100 proofer? Let's see how different they really are. It's a triple base on the mash and drum. What's up folks, I'm Jason C and welcome back to the Mash and Drum. Like, subscribe, share, and welcome to today's double, well, triple bass episode. If you guys have any suggestions for some head-to-head -head matchups, leave them below in the comments. And remember, it could be two bourbons, three bourbons, four, maybe not more than four. <laughs> All right, let's learn a little bit more about today's matchups. First, we have the Old Forester's Signature 100 Proof Bourbon. It gets its name and honors the legacy of founder George Garvin Brown, which features his signature on every bottle. Mash bill of 72 corn, 18% rye, 10% malted barley. It's non h stated, 100 proof, and priced at only about 23 bucks. Next up is one of my personal favorites. It's Cooper's Craft 100 proof barrel reserve, also from Brown Foreman. Cooper's Craft barrel reserve is made with a one of a kind chiseled and charred American white oak barrel. It's aged at least four years. Mash bill a little bit different here of 75 corn, 15% rye, 10% malted barley. Price for this one, 30 bucks. Lastly is Old Forester 1897 Bottled and Bond Bourbon. It's the second expression in the Old Forester Whiskey Row series, aged at least four years, mash bill of 72% corn, 18% rye, 10% malted barley, also 100 proof, and the most expensive at around 50 bucks. All right, so this is your first time watching double bass, triple bass as it is today. Uh, basically what I do is I mix these up and I judge each glass on nose, taste, and finish. The one with the most points basically wins. Mix these up a little bit more here. And then we will dive right in. All right, first glass. Let's see who wins on the nose. Here we go. First glass has a really rich nose. Those typical brown form and flavors here, but this is a little bit more oak forward, a little bit more rounded. I'm not really getting like a big punch of banana like you would think you would get in uh, something from Old Forest or even Brown Foreman. All right, good nose there. Let's go to number two. A little bit brighter here. Man, nice dense caramel here. A little bit more brown sugar in this one. Not as much oak, but a little bit brighter, a little bit sweeter too. All right, let's go to number three. Oh, this one is where I get some more banana here. A little bit more banana flavor, something you would expect from Brown Foreman, but also like heavy cinnamon too, just banana cinnamon, very bananas Foster-like. A little bit of bubble gum too. Oh yeah, bubble gum, that's what I'm definitely getting. Like a fresh cracked pack of bubble gum. Man, all three noses very different, which is interesting considering it's all from the same distillery, all 100 proof, but that's what, you know, that's what's fun about doing these. Oh man, I think it's gonna be between one and two here for the nose. I do like three, but it just comes off a little bit too bright almost when compared to the other two. Still a good nose though. I'm probably, Man, these two are close. I think I'm gonna have to give the nod to glass number two. I think glass number two is the one that I'm digging the most, at least on the nose. All right, we got the nose. Point goes to number two or letter B, whatever you wanna call it. Let's try the palette, here we go. Mm. First one is anything you would expect and anything you would love about a really good bourbon. I get a little bit more of the brown form and banana on the on the uh, on the palate of this one, not so much on the nose. Good oak, good sweetness. Man, second sip, this just really just this has a nice finish too. We'll get into finish, but it's really bringing some good spice characteristics to it. Good mouthfeel on this too, even for a hundred proof, it's got a nice texture to it. Man. First one already. I mean, first one was pretty close on the nose. It's going to be tough to beat. Let's go to number two. This is my favorite on the nose by a very slight margin over number one here. So cheers. Here we go. Number two, not as spicy on the palate, but again, I am just coming off number one here. Mm. 
Yeah, I think the reasons why I like number two on the nose, I feel like it has a little bit more of like an like an oak balance to go with the sweetness. I feel like number one's pretty sweet. Number two is a little bit more oak to it. Really delicious though. Not as great as a finish though, I think is number one. But again, we'll judge finish. Mm, that is good. It's a little bit sweeter, I think, than number one. But number one might... These two are really close. All right, let's go to number three here. Number three is good. Number three has... I think it's probably the sweetest out of all three. Again, I think it's got a little bit more of like that bubblegum slash bananas foster, a little bit of brown sugar there too. Not a lot of oak, nice little bite of finish on it. But I feel like it's lacking compared to the other two here. Um, this is crazy because, you know, Cooper's Craft is in here and that's probably... I think I've talked about it enough before. Cooper's Craft 100 Barrel Reserve is one of my go-to bourbons along with Wild Turkey 101. Like those two, if I'm looking for something to sip and I don't know what to drink, generally I'm reaching for one of those two. They go good in cocktails, they go good neat, they go good on the rocks. They're, they're very, uh, they're kind of like Swiss Army Knife bourbons. <laughs> kind of use them in anything, uh, in any situation too. So it'll be interesting to see where Cooper's Craft falls in this lineup. All right, back to one and two here. Man, it is close, but I think I'm gonna have to give the palette to one. So I like the nose on two. I love the palette on one. I think three is gonna be kind of lost in the shuffle already because it doesn't really have the palette and already the finish is kind of you know, lagging on three as well. So it's really gonna come down to the finish on one and two. Let's see which one one's out here. The palette on one and the and the, the finish on it is just, I don't know if two is gonna have what it takes here. Yeah, two doesn't wanna go away either. This is like, what could this be? I think, I think I have to give it to number one because number one, it brings the flavors on the mid palette to the finish. It's not just spice, um, man. So basically I'm, I get to leave in this order. This is my first place. Number two is a very, very close second place. I mean, it's really one A and, and you know, one A and one B. Uh, whereas my third glass kind of really fell behind uh, these other two. So, all right, big reveal. Here we go. Last place. I'm going to guess, just based on previous tastings, that that could be the Old Forester 100 signature. Could be wrong, though. That is a very sneaky good bourbon. What is it? <laughs> it is. It is the Old Forester 100 signature. Still an absolutely ridiculously good bourbon for the money. For $23, I have done blinds where this takes down a lot of bourbons, double its price, sometimes even triple its price. So, comes down to Cooper's and Old Forester 1897, which I think is probably one of the most unheralded bottles in the Whiskey Row lineup. Everybody talks about 1910, 1920, very rarely talk about the other two, including 1897. So, first place is, shut up. 1897, second place, and still my number one budget champion, Cooper's Craft 100 proof. I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is about it. Maybe that chiseled and charred technique that they use, that's what it is. I just feel like it brings a really nice spice, good oak. I mean, this one's hard to beat, I'm telling you. I think what I have to do next is put this versus Wild Turkey, but I'm gonna have to throw a third bottle in there to see how it would go, especially for a 100 proof uh, whiskey. Maybe a little early times, I don't know guys. You guys let me know in the comments. If I have to put Cooper's versus Wild Turkey 101 versus something else, maybe one of my personal favorites, what should it be? Let me know down in the comments. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode of Triple Bates today. We put Cooper's Craft Reserve versus Bottled and Bond. 
uh, Old Forester 1897 versus Old Forester Signature. If you did, hit the subscribe button below, please hit the like button, and if you haven't yet, find me on Instagram. Let me know down in the comments uh, maybe what I should put against Cooper's Craft along with Wild Turkey 101 to see what my truly favorite everyday sipper is or any other ideas you have. And as I always say, it's not about the whiskey, it's the people you share it with. So what we always do at the end of every double base, triple base episode is we blend them. So I'm gonna blend them all here. Because Cooper's one, I'm gonna give Cooper the kind of the head name. Uh, I'm gonna call this uh, Cooper's Row. Cooper's Row blend. We'll do because um, it's Whiskey Row, it's Old Forester, it's Cooper's. We'll call this blend Cooper's Row, and we'll see how this works out. It's all brown form, and I feel like it should work, but you never know. Here we go. Cheers. What happened there is is that the banana went from minimal to. You're drinking banana chips. Um, if you love banana, this might work for it, but this is not, that ain't working for me. <laughs> Cheers, see you guys next time right here on the Mass and Drum. Love you guys.